oh yeah, uh, that guy who just won a Nobel Prize. Yeah, we used to we used to have lunch in hall every every Sunday together at Trinity College. <laughs> Welcome to Frank's Diana Explains. Today's topic is why you, if you're a smart teenager, and you like an intellectual challenge, and you're creative and you like building things, should really consider doing computer science at Trinity College, or at least at the University of Cambridge, or at least at any university. This is something you may not have considered as a career yet, but you'd probably like it if you fit that profile. Have you ever programmed a computer? Maybe you don't even know why you would enjoy it so much. I'm really passionate about computing, as you can probably tell. But maybe it's difficult for you to identify with me because I'm so much older than you, because I don't look like you, because I have a different background from you. And so I've made it a point uh, of interviewing a variety of other computer scientists who are enjoying what they do as much as I do, uh, but who don't look anything like me. And I want you to hear it from them, why it's great for them and why it might be great for you. If you like this video, please stick a like on it. And for more like this one, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to be told of when they come out, and also browse the ones that have already come out. Welcome, everyone. I'm delighted to introduce my student, Ori Ioana Vasilescu, who is a first year computer scientist. So, Ori, can you tell us something about yourself and your experience at Cambridge and uh, what you like or what you enjoy? Um, hi, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, I think my experience at Cambridge has been quite different from the usual experience, but I was very lucky to still be able to partake in some of the, the university activities, such as university sports. And even though it was quite downsized, uh, they really helped me get through, um, the, the different approach that online lectures uh, and online labs and online supervisions uh, required from me. So uh, what do you do in life? What are your, your, your interests and what drew you to computer science? Have you been doing that for a long time? Um, I have been doing it for possibly as long as I can remember, since both of my parents are computer scientists. So some of the early games I, I was playing, even though they weren't directly uh, presented as computer science, were things like guess the number. And my dad taught me how to go for the middle number and then keep guessing middles until I learned binary search when I was four. Um, so I guess my interest in computer science has been going for a long time, longer than I even realize it was an interest for computer science. Oh, that's that, that's uh, very cool to hear. So you you learned on you learned algorithms uh, before you could probably write. But at which stage <laughs> did you actually write your first program? Um, I actually didn't write my first line of code until I was in high school. Uh, at which time I did start to pick it up quite fast and. Uh, it, it felt like second nature to me, and I've been doing it ever since. What, what's your first programming language? Uh, it was C++. Uh, it was, it's the one that most schools back in Romania use. And uh, now looking back on it, it might have been quite a harsh start to computing, uh, having interacted with um, other teaching kind of like ideas and seeing uh, ch younger children learn to code in Python before they learn C++ because Python is closer to how pseudocode works and closer to understand just by reading it. Um, so C++ was definitely an interesting language to start, but it gave me a great understanding of the underlying principles of computing. Well, uh, since I'm speaking with an expert here, C++, uh, there is C++ as a first language. Uh, there is a way of teaching it, which is the way Bjarne Spruce superintended it, which is using it as a high level language, which can have 
a variety of abstractions for making all the pieces you want fit together. And there's another way, which unfortunately is common, but is not very pedagogically sound, where basically C++ is like C, and the teacher already knows C, and C++ is more fashionable, so they teach C++, but it's all low-level garbage and lots of pointers and lots of tricks that you shouldn't really be doing if you do clean C++. Which one? Of it these might have been the latter. <laughs> it might have been the latter. Okay. So <laughs> your brain has been polluted from a young age. How did you Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how I cleaned it up. Um, I think Cambridge approach to teaching algorithms um, was very helpful. Uh, we were doing OCaml in first term and OCaml is a language that I hadn't heard of before Cambridge. I don't know anyone who had contact with it before Cambridge, which made it an amazing starting ground for everyone who was coming here because it allowed us to all have to learn something to all have to kind of like think about things in a different way and it gave us the opportunity to still have those kinds of conversations that help learning that the kinds of conversations that it's i i found over my years of learning and just being in school that the best way to make sure you know a concept is to try to explain it to someone and so i've always been an advocate for uh discussing and talking through solutions with your peers because if somebody comes to you and they ask you a question and you realize that you cannot explain it even though you thought you knew it that is a great incentive to actually go back and try to be able to explain those things so having OCaml as a language that nobody knew meant that we all had to go through that process of learning to explain things in OCaml. Well, uh, I'm, I'm glad you picked up on that. That's all uh, very much on purpose. Uh, the computer science tripus attracts very bright people from all over the world, but with widely different backgrounds and school preparation experience and that we have to cater for people like you who basically done programming in their breast milk uh, and uh, people who never programmed before university i mean they're, they're rare and rarer these days but nominally we don't require people to know how to program before they come to cambridge and therefore we have to offer something that uh, suits all of them now if we do something where we teach programming from zero we can do that but we are going to bore to death people like you so by introducing as the first course uh, OCaml, which is a functional programming language that, uh, as you said, basically nobody's heard of before, uh, then we put you all on an even ground. And your experience with uh, traditional imperative languages is not that helpful in the sense that you have to rethink everything in a different way. And so you don't have that huge uh, advantage that you would have over other people if we if our first course were similar to what you've already done for 10 years and so we we put everybody in in a similar position of being starters and you don't have a special advantage for having done programming before but you still all face some interesting intellectual challenges and by the sound of it it worked it worked <laughs> it worked <laughs> That's good. Well, uh, you've done one year at Cambridge. Uh, Course-wise, what was the most interesting, the most interesting things that you did? Um, I think I can kind of like split interesting into two parts because uh, there were courses like algorithms and discrete maths where I felt like I was learning. Uh, important basic things that would help me a great deal in my computing career and things that I need to know to like to lay the foundations of what I will learn in the following years or in the following decades of my life as a computer scientist and that's the useful interesting that's the parts that I found interesting because I knew they would help me and I saw how they could uh, extend to so many other things and but at the same time to balance out the intensity of learning those things I also found um, the paper three uh, modules quite interesting because they gave me a time to breathe and a time to kind of explore uh, branches of computer science 
I'm, I'm talking specifically are, about people who um, are doing, sorry. Yeah, paper three modules are what uh, computer scientists who are doing 50%. I don't think any, I don't think that's an option for us anymore. Am I, yeah. But basically think of them as extra. And they were like, there were courses such as introduction to graphics or machine learning and real world data. They were interesting branches of computing that kind of gave us a taste of what it would be like to choose them. And I think they were really helpful in um, having something that's not as intense, but at the same time, having something that could help us decide for future years what kind of modules we'd like to go for and what kinds of things we enjoyed and what kinds of things we didn't. So I think those are two very different, interesting things, but I found both of them interesting. So the, 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 these uh, paper three courses were the ones that were a bit more specialized than the foundational things in paper one and two. And so yeah. having a glimpse already in your first year of things that you might do if you go into a certain branch or another branch, that's what the second part. It was very it. helpful and yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, has this given you uh, an idea of where you want to specialize in your second and third year? Um, I think I really enjoyed the graphics course and with my um, past interest in uh, video game design and things like that. I feel like that is a very common way to get into computer science when you see video game and you think, oh, that is so cool. I really want to be able to do that. I think a lot of kids will will kind of have that train of thought at one point or another. Um, I think that is one aspect of my um, I'm thinking of the word in Romanian, of my wish to become a computer scientist, of my desire, <laughs> but that makes it sound very, <laughs> um, yeah, of my desire to become a computer scientist. Uh, and it definitely, introduction to graphics definitely gave me an interesting um, incentive to think about pursuing that. Uh, and at the same time, in a similar way to how OCaml uh, taught us a different way to think, introduction to graphics introduced um, a different way of using things we'd learned in maths, like matrices were very much used in that course, or vectors were used now in a different context, in a different light. And I think that's one thing that I really enjoy about um, the courses I'm being taught at Cambridge is how they all end up linking together, but in ways that if you're not paying attention, you might miss, but that are very helpful to actually spot out and kind of like build your understanding of them through how they are linked together. That's, that's very insightful. Did you expect that before coming to Cambridge? Um, I think I hope for it more than expecting it, um, as in it's always been mentioned uh, in when I was like learning. Um, when you're when you're in school and still learning different subjects, sometimes they will try to like link to try to link them together, but um, it may be harder and it may be a problem of the department's not communicating properly. But when you come into university, that kind of problem dissolves because it's the same department of people interacting constantly and building these courses to some extent together. Or if somebody built the course and somebody else ends up lecturing it later, they might have knowledge of having lectured other courses and they can build that into it and it just ends up being way better connected in university than I'd ever experienced in school before. From your history, we understand you, you were onto computer science early on. At what point did you decide it was going to be Cambridge for you? At what point did you make that commitment to come and apply here and why? Um, I was, so in my last two years of um, high school, college, whatever, 
uh, language you're using calls it. Um, so now I was in sixth form, the UK equivalent of sixth form. Uh, I had some, my, my, my math teacher and my tutor saw uh, a potential for me to apply, apply to Cambridge. And um, this was coming from a place of um, having some other uh, teachers in my school having been to Cambridge and they could give their input and experience of the university and they recommended it for Oxford, maybe a bit subject subjectively. Uh, but Cam Cambridge had always been my first choice from those discussions and uh, I, I can't say I regret it. <laughs> good, good to hear. <laughs> and also you specifically chose Trinity, so uh, you applied to Trinity, we interviewed you at Trinity, you made a very good impression on us. Uh, what made you choose Trinity over the 31 colleges that are available at Cambridge? Um, I knew Trinity was well known for uh, mathematics and computer science. And um, I knew Trinity was quite a STEM, sub uh, STEM subject oriented college from what I'd heard. And I think Trinity is a prestigious college and aiming high is always going to give better rewards. Um, so I think my choice was made in like, like the famous saying goes, shoot, uh, shoot for the moon. And if you don't, you land amongst the stars as in, I tried to go for Trinity. And even if I had been put into a pool or even rejected, I still had that confidence of, oh, I've been to, I have been accepted. To, I've been called to an interview at Trinity. That's still a great achievement, but. I didn't have to deal with those emotions because I am here. So yes. you, you made a very good impression. What people may not realize, I mean, people who are viewing this may wonder, OK, maybe I should apply to Cambridge, I should apply to Trinity, but I'm very scared of mm -hmm. all this stuff. It's super scary. And uh, am I going to be good enough? Um, and we, we could have another separate discussion about how the uh, admissions and interview process goes but i don't want to hijack the time uh, of you talking because i would be doing more talking than i should and so i'll just just pass on that but uh, on the fact that people might uh, fear this um competition it's inevitably a competition because there's that many people applying and then that many people being interviewed and then that many people being selected and many people have fear of this rejection and falling out of this funnel because only a small fraction actually get out yes. and get admitted. Uh, what are your feelings towards that? And what should one do about it? Because of course, you can only get in and get to the success that you are experiencing by being here, if you take the courage to apply, right? So tell us, I mean, you've just been through that recently. How, how was that? How stressful was it? And how did you cope with that? And what are your words of advice for people who are thinking about that now? I think there's no harm in applying. Uh, applying is, as you said, the first step towards getting to that success. And I think through my experience of the admissions program to the admission steps, I've come to realize that um, Cambridge as an institution and the colleges as the, the people who work in the colleges have done this for hundreds of years and they know what they're doing to the extent of if you are if you have the right set of skills and the right attitude and the right motivations to be here they will be able to recognize that and if you don't then that's okay as well there's there is really no harm in trying and trying to do your best and trying to be authentic to yourself and authentic to your skills is honestly the best and only way to get in. Yes, I am certainly a, a strong advocate of the fact that uh, people should be given, given equal opportunity. Yes. Uh, 
to go for it. And not all of them will be admitted. In fact, the majority of them will not be admitted, but everybody should have the same chance to, to go for it. Uh, and um, of course, it is not pleasant to be rejected, but you know, every one of us who's achieved anything uh, has had to face a few rejections, but has kept on uh, until they got some acceptances. <laughs> Right, you know, I could list a yeah. big number of rejections I've had, but uh, it didn't stop uh, the things that then then worked out. Um, on the other hand, people who don't apply will never be admitted. Now, after having been uh, admitted, uh, all of you who are admitted uh, make a pool of, of course, very talented uh, people, and still within that pool, there's often uh, a feeling of, do I really belong in here? Uh, maybe I just got in by chance, by fluke, uh, and all the other people look much smarter than me. Have you, have you felt this kind of uh, feeling that uh, uh, imposter syndrome is looming? And how should one deal with that? Yes, uh, most definitely. And it was quite funny to me how uh, very early on, uh, I had older students and even staff members tell me that this is a possibility. This is something that a lot of people experience. Imposter syndrome, feeling that, as you, as you mentioned, that you're here by chance and that you don't actually deserve your place and that everyone else is actually doing way better than you are. And all of those, all of those jumbled emotions, um, even though I had been warned about them, it's very hard to not feel them. Um, the, the kind of people who will end up in Cambridge are people who have had success in their previous careers, who have had, uh, who have felt like school was reasonably easy. And now coming into an environment where everyone has felt that and everyone has been in a position of being the first or the second or very close to the top and now that mathematically is impossible for everyone to still be the first or very close to the first and some at times that was even further accentuated by being part of a minority or kind of like not fitting the stereotype of what a computer scientist should be and going back to the admissions discussion I sometimes had feelings like, oh, I only got admitted into this cohort because uh, I didn't fit that and they had to fill some sort of diversity quota that I was chosen for, which I realize is a stupid feeling and I realize is as far away from the truth as could be. And uh, I think the only way to fix that is to have more people applying. As you were saying, everyone should be given the same chance. And if uh, the percentage of people applying that are non-male increases, then the percentage of people accepted that are non-male increases. Uh, it was actually interesting to look at some of the statistics for uh, the difference between, I think it was CTMUA and admission rate, where the percentage of females who were accepted was way higher than the percentage of those applying. But I think that was more from the perspective from because um, only the only the girls who are really passionate and really uh, good at computer science are encouraged to apply. Whereas in boys, whenever they show any bit of interest they will be told oh you should go and try because so many others have tried and i think that really should be changed to anyone who shows interest to be encouraged to apply yes uh, you 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 say it very well that uh, um we <laughs> We do our best not to be biased in choosing, but we can only choose among the people who are in front of us. We can we can exactly. only choose in people who have applied, and if only uh, less than ten percent uh, of non-males apply, then it's unlikely that we will end up with a gender-balanced mix between the ones that we admit. 
because we can only pick from the few that are there. Um, now, I am also glad that we see eye to eye on the issue of quotas. I would find quotas very wrong and, in fact, offensive, uh, patronizing to say, well, you, you're in, not because you're great, you're in because you're not made and we have too many maids and so we have to rebalance and therefore we take you. Yeah. So you're not, not good. Yes. That's wrong. That's a kind of implicit message that comes with quotas. You know, you're you're here because of your diversity, not because of your greatness. No, that's I think that's totally the wrong way to do. The input should be as diverse as society is diverse. And then among those we want to find the best, just purely on the basis of their smarts on the their brains or their competence or their passion and so on regardless of who they are regardless of where they come from regardless of how rich they are regardless of what they look like their color skin or gender or whatever else uh, and you are the best of the best that's why we like to have i mean cambridge is to be at the top of the world needs to take the best people in the world we wouldn't want people who just come from you know english schools for example we want you know people from anywhere in the world because we want the best in the world uh, but no other criterion than brilliance in the specific subject is what we want to base on. No quotas, no anything like that. But I think you've said it better than me. Um, once you are admitted and you find that you are no longer the best of the school as you've always been so far before Cambridge, how do you deal with that? Um, I think constant reminders and interacting with your peers to and being honest about your struggles and your experience is the best way to go and i think that extends to other aspects of life but that's a bigger discussion <laughs> than what we have time for right now right. i think you often see people um telling white lies about how far they are with an assignment or how confident they are about a certain exam. And after you realize that there's no point in um, lying about th those little things and that it actually benefits everyone's stress levels more if people are just honest about how they're doing, I think that's when you start to kind of forget about those that imposter syndrome. And I've, I've noticed that in myself where with my supervision partner would be honest, would say, Hey, have you started on this work? And then when we both said, no, we could actually get together and work rather than both saying, Oh yeah, I've been doing a lot. And then both of us are stressing that the other did it while we actually did it. So yeah, teamwork, teamwork, teamwork helps a lot. <laughs> Yes, tell us a bit more. I mean, the people who are watching this, maybe I hope we, we will convince them that it's a good idea to apply to do computer science if you're passionate about computer science, no matter what your background is. Uh, some of them may actually be thinking of coming to Cambridge, even coming to Trinity. And, you know, I'll be teaching them personally if they do. Uh, and that's great. Uh, can you, not all of them will know very much about how this business of the supervision part and what. Right. <laughs> what you're talking about uh, how does it work at Cambridge how does it work at Trinity in the college system uh supervisions are I think at least by name specific to Cambridge uh they are a system where on top of the lectures you receive from the department and the labs that you do with the department you have uh computer scientists in the college organize um smaller groups uh, of two or three or even one student who gets to talk every week to a supervisor and go through work about the course and discuss questions that they might have in a setting that is more personal and better aimed at their needs rather than being in a lecture hall with 50 or 100 other people. Uh, so in a supervision, you might discuss uh, interesting problems that relate to the course, or even just if you need questions that you have about the lectures. But the advantage of them are that you are usually the only one or two there, and whatever questions you ask, they will be answered. 
And I think that is very helpful to making sure you don't fall behind and making sure that you're keeping up with everything that's going on and making sure you understand everything and having someone to check in weekly is better than what you might see at other universities where you just have to watch through a bunch of lectures and then have to sit an exam at the end of the year. Um, you, you sound like you're happy that you're at Trinity, happy that you're at Cambridge. What is the highlight of your, I mean, why is it the best thing for you to be here rather than anywhere else? I think I finally feel like I'm being challenged and I finally feel like I am surrounded by people that I can learn a lot from. And I feel like uh, before in my life, I had to look for that in, in the few teachers that I had, but now I have it in all of my peers and I have it in a, a much wider community. And it's much easier to find the time between uh, my peers to discuss these things. And thinking into the, uh, for the future, I think having these kinds of connections with people who might go on to do great things and having those friendships laid down now uh, is not only extremely useful, but also might give some interesting and funny experiences in the future. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, that guy who just won a Nobel Prize. Yeah, we used to we used to have lunch in hall every every Sunday together at Trinity College. <laughs> Absolutely. They might say that about you. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, we don't have Nobel Prize in our field, so we are excused from that pressure. Might be just the Turing Award. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Okay, so um, you um, you know we are speaking to people who have yet to decide what to do at university, and uh, I think if I had been in that situation uh, at you know sixteen, seventeen, something like that, uh, of being able to speak to someone like you, uh, I would have been really happy of the chance of. Uh, asking someone who's just got into Cambridge, done a year at Cambridge, at Trinity College, uh, a few questions. Now, mm -hmm. if you address that type of, uh, of audience, a smart teenager who's um, always done very well, uh, likes computers so much, and is thinking of Cambridge, maybe slightly hesitant for some of the reasons we said, what would you have to say to them? You, you can make up the questions thinking of what you would have uh, wanted to ask in that situation. Make up the question and then answer it. Mm. Um, I think I'd like to ask whether they feel like they're applying their skills and whether they feel like they're learning things that will be useful. And I think computer science is very interesting in the way or at least computer science at Cambridge um, does a very good job of creating a foundation, as I said before, in a way that might not be initially apparent from the first term or the first two terms, because we are training to be computer scientists and we are training to do a different job than computer engineers or people who take a programming course online for a couple of weeks and then go to program some web app do. And computer science is an amazing field for advancing and creating and developing things and uh, technology. But it's definitely something that you have to uh, commit to and you have to understand that it is a theoretical exact thing that has many, many applications. So I think one thing that I would suggest to anyone who wants to apply is to look through the courses and make sure they do sound interesting and that 
you are aware of the things you want to study uh, rather than going in and thinking, oh, I'm just going to learn to code in a bunch of different languages and that's all I need to do. And I'm then going to be a great computer scientist because it requires so much more and it's beautiful because it requires so much more. 